Together, we welcome those tuning in online already uh, here in person. We've had a wonderful evening, a great meal, and uh, good fellowship. So excited to journey in the book of Proverbs. We introduced it last week, and uh, we'll get started in chapter 1, verse 1 tonight. So get your Bibles ready, your notes, and uh, it's on the screen as well as the smart uh, screen right here behind me. We should have everybody uh, tuning in tonight. Let's pray together, and we'll get going. Heavenly Father, thank you for... This day that you blessed us with, and I thank you for how you continually watch over, provide for, and take care of your children. And tonight, we just have so many things to be thankful for, and we just want to say right up front how much we love you. And even as we get into our study tonight, I pray that we'll never lose sight of the fact that what we're wanting is to be more like you. And your word gives us instruction. And the book of Proverbs is a very practical example of how we can become more Christ-like, even uh, with some wording that is a little different than a lot of the rest of the Scripture. But I pray that it will be uh, a, a beneficial time tonight. I pray that when we walk out of here in uh, an hour, that, Lord, we will go out saying it has been good to be in the house of the Lord and to study and to uh, discuss, pray together. And uh, so, Father, you have your way tonight. We'll give you praise for all you do. In Christ's name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Proverbs chapter 1. We introduced it last week, and tonight will be very similar in a lot of ways, I've titled the lesson tonight just Prologue, and Prologue is simply an introduction. And so the first seven verses of chapter one of the book of Proverbs is what we're going to cover tonight. And in this, we get kind of the uh, focus of where the study is going to go. I told you last week, Proverbs is not... A book that is well organized. Some books in the Bible just have a flow to them, especially when you get to the New Testament. The Apostle Paul, he's writing letters and they have a specific message and he's much like a preacher would outline a sermon. But now this one's going to be kind of all over the map. And yet it's good stuff that I think we're going to enjoy. And uh, we're going to be in the first section. We broke it down last week. The first section of Proverbs is chapters 1 through chapter 9. And we called it a collection of wisdom instructions. So as we get into this tonight, you're going to start hearing language that sounds like an older person, a father, is speaking to a younger person, uh, a child. And probably a child of about 12 years of age. In the Hebrew Jewish mindset, that is when they move from childhood into really adulthood. And so now this is where teaching is paramount. And so this is fatherly instruction given to the young. So that's going to kind of be the, the visual, even if you want to picture... Big picture an old grandfather type with the gray hair and then speaking to the grandchild. And that's kind of the way this is going to get going here tonight. I know when you're a child and uh, even on past 12 when you get to be 13, 14, 15, 16, sometimes you think you already know it all. Anybody relate to that? Um, I thought my mom and dad had lost all of their smarts. When I was 16, I thought I knew more than they did. And uh, about the time I ended up getting into the real world and having to take on real life responsibilities, I started telling mom and dad, uh, man, I'm sorry for the way I acted back then. Uh, you know a whole lot more than I do. And uh, so that's gonna kind of be the, the, the mindset, the visual that we're looking at uh, a lot of reference to the young 
and it's advice, it's, it's counsel. And uh, wisdom, of course, is a big theme of this. So you're going to hear a lot of talk about that tonight. We'll break it down. We'll do a few little word studies as we get started. But let's read the passage. It's just seven verses. And then we'll get going. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For attaining wisdom and discipline for understanding words of insight for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life doing what is right and just and fair for giving prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion to the young let the wise listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables. The sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. So under points to ponder, we've got three tonight. Number one, write down the title. The title. And this is where we find in verse 1 the Proverbs of Solomon. So that's going to be the title of the book. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. I, I like the fact that we just concluded the study of the book of Psalms and we dealt with David even from the time he was a young shepherd boy all the way up through adulthood, manhood, as a warrior, as a king. And uh, so now there's going to be a lot of back and forth as we go through Proverbs referencing David, who undoubtedly was the one that was teaching his young son, Solomon, these very truths. And you got to figure that Solomon was probably kind of like I described myself a little earlier. When he was a young man, a teenager, let me try it my way. Let me see if I know better than daddy knows. And uh, so there's going to be a lot of back and forth between father and son. So it's very fitting right in the opening verse. The relationship is spelled out. The Proverbs of Solomon Son of David, King of Israel. That's where we get the title. Point to ponder number two. Write this down, the purpose. The purpose. Now this is mainly what we'll deal with tonight. What is the purpose of the writing? And this is where we begin to break down some of these words. Verse two. For attaining wisdom and discipline. So, this is a question we ask a lot, but let's try it again here tonight. Give me a good definition of wisdom. Just shout it out. What does, what does wisdom mean? What's being referenced here when we talk about attaining wisdom? Just shout it out. Pardon? God's Word. God's Word. Discernment. That, that word's going to come up often. Experience, I like that. Anybody else? Knowledge. Knowledge, very good. We'll, we'll kind of take all of that and let me give you some definitions. Wisdom is knowledge, but much more than just the intellect, the knowing. Wisdom is knowledge, knowing, but then the capacity to make good use of it. I think a lot of times we know better than what we end up doing. And wisdom is being able to translate the knowledge, the head knowledge, into actual doing that is positive, not only for you, the individual, but for others 
around you. So, so it's, it's knowledge, yes, that is gained from experience. And there is going to be this element of discerning the word of God, the will of God. So let's go a little further with this. Wisdom, James chapter 1 verse 5 tells us, is a gift from God. So now this is good. If any of you are lacking, ask, and God will give you wisdom. That's good news for us that are lacking. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes people that are very, very smart have trouble asking for help or asking for instruction. And I know it already. But wisdom is... I'm going to be a lifelong student. I'm going to be a lifelong learner. And I'm never going to reach that point where I just think I, I have it, I've arrived, and I know it all. Wisdom is knowledge, but along with it, the capacity to make good use of it. Now, in a very practical way, because this is going to be so practical, it is going to be viewed as a sound comprehensive view of life itself. What is the study of life? What's the, what's the word? You, you had it in college, freshman year. Philosophy. Study of life. And I think I've told you before, my freshman year was at University of Cincinnati. I had Philosophy 101, and I came away from that class with this definition of a philosopher. A philosopher is a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat who's not there. <laughs> Sometimes the study of life can, can push us way out to the boundaries and sometimes you just keep going and you can't really reel it in and it's almost a futile exercise. What's the point? What's the use? But I think with this word wisdom, we're on to something. And you're going to find out what does life really mean? So that's why this book is, is so fascinating to me. It's going to, it's going to get us right in the everyday uh, example of our lives and, and how we live out our lives. You, you could sum up some of this as just general instruction for life. Just uh, proven principles of life. Again, the aged grandfather with gray hair, wisdom, speaking truth into that young child. And uh, it's what I want you to hear what wisdom is not. And what Proverbs is not is to claim some of these little one or two liners and say, if I do that, then I am going to be blessed with good health, with wealth. Because that's going to come up over and over again in these Proverbs. There's going to be little sayings that you're almost going to get the impression, well, man, if I just do this, then I'm going to get that. That's not what Proverbs is. And that's not what wisdom is. But it's the overall total collective of the Word of God. So that's why I want to say this right up front. Never forget Proverbs is one of 66 books that make up the whole. We get in trouble if we try to take out a section and base a theology on that. So I wouldn't recommend taking some of the Proverbs and building your theology around it. But take this wisdom journey and plug it in to your everyday life. I want to be more and more like you, Jesus. I, I, I think what I'd love to say to you here tonight, it's going to be more than just a principle. Learning wisdom, it's going to lead us to a person, Jesus Christ. So I want you to keep in mind, as we always do, we did it in the book of Psalms, always be pointing to Jesus. And this is in the Bible to help us live a grounded, uh, disciplined, that word's going to come up tonight, life 
that exercises on a daily basis proven principles that in the end are going to produce something great. So, so that's the journey that we're going to be on for attaining wisdom and discipline. Now talk to me about discipline. What is discipline? And why is that necessary? Yes, I want wisdom, God, but in order to get it, I have to have discipline? Talk to me for a moment on that. What, what does discipline bring to the table? We want wisdom. Give it to me, God, generously. What's your concept of discipline? Give me some definitions. Purpose of discipline. Endurance. Isn't it amazing, again, we talked about it last week and already a couple references tonight. Proverbs, Old Testament, James, New Testament. Trying of your faith worketh perseverance on this journey. Anybody ever learned some lessons in the school of hard knocks? That's life. That, that, that's the old grandfather saying to son, I can help you. You don't have to go through the same problems I went through. But so many times, and I guarantee you Solomon was like, I described myself earlier. No, I'm going to try it my way. I know you told me this, Mom. I know you told me this, Dad. So every now and then there had to be some discipline. Anybody else? What's, what's discipline bring to this lesson? We want wisdom. Where does discipline come into play? Jamie? Yeah, I like that. Self-control. Do we? When not to. When not to. See, that's back to, again, that definition of wisdom. It's knowledge, but it's knowledge of knowing when to and when not to. That's good. What about accountability? Accountability? Yeah. Code of behavior. A code of behavior. A code of behavior. Someone lives a disciplined life. Now, there is an element of discipline as a punishment. But for the most part, when we talk about discipline in the book of Proverbs, it's more of someone that has been able to employ some self-control. And they do live a measured, disciplined life. And uh, they, they kind of avoid the extremes, if you please. My daddy used to tell me, he said, David, you can get in the ditch on both sides of the road. And that's true. We go too far this way, we're going to get in trouble. We go too far this way, we're going to... But the disciplined life, proven principles, wisdom, we have knowledge, we know what to do it, and now discipline is going to help us understand where, when, why. Discipline, how about this definition, is the practice of training people to obey rules. Now, anybody's ever been in the military? You went through some of that. Probably right away in boot camp, didn't it? And here's the way it is. And so now you're up against that, but I was a rebellious teenager. I want to do it my way. No, here's the way it is. I uh, quoted this phrase to Tammy not long after we got married. She didn't really like it. And I don't even know why I said it, what the context was. But I was quoting a Vietnam War movie. And the uh, character was played by Tom Berenger. And he kind of had a little mutiny on his hand. Some of the guys were about ready to take him down. And uh, they were about ready to try, and he looked at them, and he said, they, because they wanted to do it their way, he said, well, there's the way it ought to be compared to you guys, or what you're saying, but then there's the way it is. And he said, I'm the way it is. Now, again, why in the world I was telling Tammy that in our first year of marriage? <laughs> Please, somebody, give me some marriage counseling, because it didn't go over very well. But... Uh, but, but see, you, you go into that, that military now environment, there's rules, there's structure. And so to get there, to learn the lesson, 
You got to be disciplined. And it's not always going to be going to be easy. Well, let's keep on track. We're on a spiritual journey. We used to sing these little songs. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. There's rules. Amen. There's structure. Remember the Bible. Interpret it in light of the Bible. 66 books. First five books of the Bible. What's it referred to as? The Pentateuch or the law. Here's the law. This is how you have to live. Here's commandments. Isn't that interesting? It's not just whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera. No, there's discipline. There's structure. There's learning. And we, we referenced it many times in the book of Psalms. The, the Hebrew children, as they grew up, they had to memorize the Torah, the law, the Psalms. And, and, and yet... What do we know about the law? Interpret the Bible with the Bible. Get over in the New Testament. The law was never meant to save us. It's a standard that's really showing us we can't do it. We need help. And so now these Proverbs come along, just like the, prof the prophets came along, just as the Psalms we looked at, but now these Proverbs are going to come along and say, here's guidance. Here's help. But it's all pointing us to Jesus. It's all saying, here's how you live quality life. Here's how you find meaning in life. That's the number one question. Young people, adults are all searching for. What's the purpose? What's the use? What's the meaning of it all? Well, Verse 2, for attaining wisdom and discipline. And it's interesting in the original language here that discipline refers to mental, physical, social. It's the whole ball of wax. There, there's some people that are disciplined in one area of their life and they're not in another. Hello? Hello? There are people that can put on a good game face and uh, the outward looks good, but the interior life is ugly. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brothers, it should not be. This discipline has to affect the totality of who we are, not just who we are on Sunday. That was, that was another one of my, my deals when I was that rebellious teenager. Dad, Dad said it about me. He said, that boy sows his wild oats all week long and then prays for crop failure on Sunday. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Uh, you know, you, you're, not, you're not almost praying. You either are or you aren't. And, and this is a journey. That, that we're starting, and I just think it's fascinating right off the bat to understand these words because they're going to keep coming up for attaining wisdom and discipline for understanding words of insight. Now this understanding, somebody already said discernment. This is where that comes into play. Isn't it really good, practical knowledge, help, if you can kind of read people? If you can kind of look at a crowd and see what's going on? If you need to get some, if, if there's something not right, do you see some red flags going up? That's discernment. You ever been in a situation and everybody sounds like they're having a good time, but all of a sudden, uh, you get that little Holy Spirit check on the inside. I don't think I better do this. That's discernment. That's a good thing. And you can learn that. As we take this journey through discipline, through knowledge, through discernment, 
Now all of a sudden we're at a point where how do we use that? We know when to pull back. We know when to go forward. We know when to say something. We know when to be quiet and not say something. Amen? That's the one that gets us in trouble more than any other. You're going to hear a lot about that in the book of Proverbs. So right up front, this is the, the introduction of the book, so to speak. These first seven verses, the title, the Proverbs of Solomon, but then the purpose for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight. How many of you were straight-A students in school? <laughs> Mike, you're shaking your head no. All right. Anybody, uh, anybody straight-A's? Valedictorian, salutatorian. Tammy, you were salutatorian, weren't you? I always said I could have been. If, if I wanted to, Brenda, that's right. If I would have applied myself. But now, here's, here's, here's my point. I think a lot of us, we, we learn how to get enough information to pass the test. To get the good grade. But did we really learn the lesson? You see what I'm getting at? There, there's a big difference in truly understanding. That's the word. In understanding something versus just knowing what the answer is so that I can get an A on the test. It's, it's kind of what's happened to... I saw a great article about the Googleization of America. The dumbing down of America. We, we don't really learn anything. We just ask Google or we ask Siri. And used to, we had road maps. And we'd study them and we tried to get the lay of the land and we knew where we were going. Now we just, wherever the GPS says turn, we turn. And there's a lot of things in life that it's, it's so handy, we're never going to go back. I mean, we've got all this wonderful technology, but... Remember, let's stay on track. Keep this in the spiritual realm. You don't have a little machine where you can just tell Google where you want to go when it comes to spiritual. There's going to have to be some discipline. There's going to have to be some instruction. There's going to be time spent in the Word of God so that you not only know, have the head knowledge, but your heart truly understands. I, I quote this often, but your theology can be as straight as a gun barrel and just as hollow. If we truly have not learned the law of God and the wisdom of His Word. So what's the purpose of the Proverbs? For attaining wisdom and discipline for understanding words of insight insight another good word getting the knowledge out there inside of us and running it through these filters of discernment wisdom knowing what to do with it now for attaining wisdom and discipline for understanding words of insight for acquiring a discipline there's that word a second time and prudent life well, now that's a new word. What does prudent mean? That's not a common word that we use. What is a prudent life? Anybody, just take a stab at it. A stuffed shirt. Yeah, I hear you, Billy. Purposeful life, there you go. Now, it's not just fly by the seat of your pants. Whatever will be, will be. No. I've got this wisdom. I, I'm, I'm disciplining myself. I've got the road marked out, the straight and narrow highway. Interpret Scripture with Scripture. Many are going to take the broad path that leads to destruction. But, hey, man, I'm, I'm focused in on... I want to be more like Jesus. 
I want to hear well done, good and faithful. And so now a prudent life is one that kind of brings all this together. And you have purpose and direction. Anything else? Those are good. A prudent life. I've got a quote here from one of the commentaries. Okay. I'm trying to put it all together with what you were saying about technology, but it says, we are living in an age of information, but we certainly aren't living in the age of wisdom. Many people who are wizards with technology are amateurs of making a success of their life. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's a powerful quote, Scott. <coughs> write that down. Yeah, write that down. And uh, I was going to say, maybe we can uh, have that handed out next week. And uh, man, that'd be a good one for all of us to take stock of every now and then. Um, again, we're, we're not going back. With all the technology we got, the convenience, the luxury we have, uh, it's amazing. But uh, in the midst of all that, let's try to be wise when it comes to knowledge, information, discipline, so that we can live a well-balanced, that comes into play here, a very disciplined, prudent life. How about these words? pertaining to a prudent life, acting with or showing care and thought for the future. Isn't that, isn't that a, a sign of some wisdom or some growing up? How about that term? When all of a sudden you do kind of think of the consequences of your actions, of your words. I mean, there was a time we didn't think about it. You're just trying to get from Monday to Friday when we were in school, working for the weekend after we get a job so that I have a break from all this and then just go back through this endless merry-go-round and that's all it's about. No, there's, there's more to it. And, and now we start thinking of the future. We start thinking of our, our health. I made a post last night. I played softball last night. Chris, you can attest, everybody. I didn't play very well. <laughs> it hit me. I'm 40 years older than these guys out here. <laughs> and, uh, I, hey, you got to start thinking about, you know, it's not worth breaking your leg over a silly ball game. Where in the past, you didn't even think about it. You just dove for the ball. Or you just ran over the catcher. You didn't even. But you start thinking, how do my decisions affect my marriage? How do my decisions affect my children, my grandchildren that are watching what I do? And so a prudent life is a disciplined life, a purposeful life that understands judgment day is coming. And we're all going to give an account. That's Bible. Interpret Bible with Bible. And, and if you don't believe this, Jesus says we will give an account of every idle word that we speak. Isn't that amazing? I mean, for some of us that do a lot of talking, that's scary. <laughs> Words matter. And, and so the prudent person is someone that... Again, now don't take this the wrong way, but this, this whole concept of wisdom, I, I don't know that a 10-year-old is going to have it. I, I, I don't know that a 20-year-old is going to have it. Now, every now and then we run into somebody that, oh, they're ahead of their time. They're, you know, they speak or they act in a way that's beyond their years. But for the most part, we're on this journey. And regardless of what name's on your diploma, all of us go through the school of hard knocks. And as we journey, and as we, we got us a little music going. But uh, let's see what's happening there. You take care of that. But we're, we're on a journey, 
And, and we the, the purpose of this, remember, the old man's talking to the young. I want you to get this right. I want you to learn the lesson. And, and not despise. You're going to hear that as we wind it up tonight. Do not despise knowledge. Do not despise wisdom. Do not despise discipline. Everything we've talked about in here tonight, do not despise that. Embrace it. Even the parts that feel like you're in boot camp. And this, uh, this exercise is too strenuous or it's too hard for me. It's benefiting our spiritual growth and, and maturity. So uh, again, the purpose, verse 2, for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, verse 3, for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life. Here's a good definition. Doing what is right and just and fair. Now that'd be a good, uh, good little test right there. Before you say something, before you do something, what if we take a moment and ask ourselves, is this right? Is it just? Is it fair? It'd be amazing how much trouble we could avoid if we would kind of ask ourselves some questions like that. Is this right? Is this just? Is this fair? And then verse 4, for giving prudence to the simple. Now, let's be clear on that word simple. It's not talking about somebody that kind of is loco. In this case, again, we're talking about a young person that hasn't learned the lessons of real life. So as we mature and we get this wisdom issue figured out, the disciplined life, the purposeful life, the prudent life, then now we're supposed to give that to others, especially the young, the simple, those that have not learned what we've learned. For giving prudence to the simple, Naive might be a good word there. Someone that just doesn't know. They're innocent, but they just don't know. It's our responsibility as elders, as we get old, to pass on the wisdom and the knowledge for giving prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion. We're just repeating now these words to the young. There it is again. A lot of this first section of the book of Proverbs is directed advice, instruction for the young. And then here's another group that is being targeted. It's completely opposite of the simple, naive, young. Verse 5, let the wise. Now, who are the wise? These are people with wisdom. These are people that have learned. The lessons from the school of hard knocks. These are the people with the experience. These are the people that have been there, done that. This is saying that we still need to be a student. Even after we have attained wisdom. Let the wise listen. Isn't that interesting? A lot of people who think of themselves as wise, they want to speak. And they want you to know, and you to know, and you to know, and everybody else to know how wise they are. But you realize one of the great characteristics of wisdom is to be quiet and listen, not do all the talking. As my mom told me many times growing up, David, you have one mouth, two ears. You should listen twice as much as you speak. I've battled that my whole life. <laughs> Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Isn't that great? I mean, you're, you're in graduate school tonight. All of us. It don't matter how many diplomas you have or how many schools you've been to, how many classes you've taken. 
We're still learning tonight, especially when it comes to the Word of God. I told someone earlier today, I said, man, I guess I was talking about that ball game last night. I'm 59 years old. I'm not a kid anymore. But I said, I'm, I'm loving Jesus more than I've ever loved Jesus. I'm enjoying being in his word more than I've ever enjoyed being in his word. And, and I think that's where we finally just get to a point where we know how much we don't know. And we just want to say, man, give me more. Amen. Give me more. And, and, and this is where, if you lack, ask. And God will give you this gift of wisdom. And it's this, it's this whole bundle of purpose and discipline. And knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance. So even that person that knows the way to go, every now and then they still need direction. Amen? Regardless of where we are in the journey of life. That's what I love about this book in particular, but the Bible, is that it's always relevant for us. I heard somebody say one time, they said, well, man, I've read the Bible through ten times. Why do I need to read it again? Every day, there's, there's fresh discernment. Every day there's fresh inspiration. So that's why we stay in the Word. And, and we love to get guidance. Why? Verse 6. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. So we're going to have all of that in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, just these little one, two, three, four line statements. Um, I've given you examples last week. And uh, I mean, Proverbs, are, they don't even have to be from the Bible. They're from many areas of life. You recognize all of these statements. The early bird gets the worm. That's a proverb. Rome wasn't built in a day. I mean, it's just common. I mean, we've heard it all of our lives. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. So as, as we begin to understand and discern these things, remember, it's all pointing us to a person, Jesus Christ. The goal, it's part of the collection of 65 other books that in their own way, very different, are going to be pointing us towards well done, good and faithful. We start with the law. It can't save us. It shows us our sin. It reveals our sin. The, the prophets began to tell of one who was coming that could save us. And now in a very practical way, the Proverbs, much like the Psalms, help us to understand that journey. We come to the New Testament and we really see the teaching of Jesus bringing into play parables. Parables, Catherine gave us the definition last week, earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus said, it's like this. There was a man going down the road and thieves and robbers came and knocked him off his horse, took all his money, beat him up, left him for dead, but a good Samaritan. He's teaching a story. He's expounding, whereas the proverb is just a little one or two liner. Now the parable gives definition to what is being spoken about. The seed, the sower. Wise man builds his house on the rock. Foolish man builds his house on the sand. And you begin to elaborate on it. The parable is more of an illustration. And then there's even reference here to sayings and riddles. Sayings and riddles. Now this is probably the one that we're least familiar with. But in the ancient world, it was kind of a big deal. They would speak in riddles. And a lot of times there were double meanings 
And sometimes it was because there was an enemy there, there was a friend there, and they didn't want the enemy to really hear the truth, and they spoke in riddles. And so a lot of times they were looking for a wise person to come and interpret the riddle. Or we have a lot of this in the Old Testament, someone that could interpret dreams. Remember the story of Joseph. There's, there's a riddle, there's a mystery here. Probably the most famous where this term is actually used in the Bible is Samson. Remember the story of Samson and the riddle? The Philistine army, they couldn't figure it out. And uh, we won't get into that. We don't have time tonight. But if you want some fun, if you can't sleep after a while, Google Samson's great riddle and see what you come up with in Scripture. But this is just summarizing. Remember the prologue, what we've looked at here tonight, the first seven verses of Proverbs. It's an overview of what is to come. The title, the Proverbs of Solomon, the purpose is understanding these Proverbs, these parables, these sayings, these riddles. And then number three, point upon number three, write down the theme. Because this is what it's all about. This is the big thing now, the theme. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord. Somebody help me with that one. What does that mean? The fear of the Lord. Respect. Respect honor. It, it's not so much, you know, I'm afraid of the dark. That kind of fear. The fear of the Lord Understanding who God is and who we are. And he's God and I'm not. That's the starting point of wisdom. When, when, you, when you really know your place. It's a great day when you find your place in life. And, and you don't try to be something else. So the, the, the beginning point of this journey, as we get into it next week, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, wisdom, discernment, discipline, prudence, all those words that we talked about, it all comes together. The fear of the Lord, again, it's a journey to a person, not just a principle of learning. The fear of the Lord, that's the person we're going after, is the beginning of knowledge. And then here's the contrast, but, you know, I love conjunctions. It's going to change, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, we could spend probably an hour right there. We don't have time for it. But uh, how many were brought up? I, my mom told me you never call someone a fool. You ever hear that? Growing up like that? I mean, that's, you don't do that. Yeah, I, that's exactly how I was raised, Miller, right there. You, you, don't, you don't say that. But now understand, in the context of this scripture, it's just the opposite. Someone who is not trying to live a disciplined, prudent, purposeful, discerning, wise lifestyle is foolish. And, and again, Jesus picks up on that. I alluded to it a few moments ago. Wise man builds his house on the rock. Fool. Builds his house on the sand. And uh, so it's just very clear the dividing line. But what's good about this, we have a choice. We don't have to be fools. We don't have to be uh, someone that misses the mark. What is sin? Missing the mark. It's like the arrow aimed at the target. And sin is missing the mark. We don't have to, we don't have to be that way. If we will apply these proverbs, these parables, these principles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of this journey of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So now here's the bottom line. You walk out of here tonight, well, I didn't get anything out of that. I'm not a bit interested in that. That's your choice. Interpret Scripture with Scripture. Come to the New Testament. Blessed 
are they who hunger and thirst for the Word of God. When, when we come to church on Sunday, when we come in here on Wednesday night, and Wednesday night's a little, we come to eat. <laughs> kind of ruined my analogy. I was going to talk about, do we approach the Word of God the way we approach eating our meals? I mean, especially when it's, we're hungry and it's our favorite meal. Man, we can't wait. Jesus is saying, I want you to have that kind of hunger, that kind of desire, that kind of thirst for my word. Jesus said one time in the New Testament, he said, my meat, okay, James, my meat, the main entree is to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That's the prudent, disciplined knowledgeable, purposeful life of wisdom. How about a comment or two before we do our prayer time? Thoughts on this journey towards wisdom. Anybody? Scott? Never settle for what you currently know. Yeah, that's good. Say that again in the microphone so everybody can hear it. Never settle for what you currently know. Yeah, never settle. I like that. Again, I'm going to be a lifelong learner. I'm going to be a lifelong student, especially of God's Word, but of life. Again, that's back to philosophy, the study of life. Really knowing what the meaning of life is. Anyone else? What, what, what did you pick up on in here tonight? Or what, what did you like? What didn't you like? Sometimes truth is hard. Sometimes discipline is not easy. Anything? Any comments? Going once, going twice. Sold. All right. Well, thank you for coming tonight. I want Miller Roach to stand up over there and give us a big... Chris, can you give me a microphone? And I'm going to set this up for him. A lot of you know Miller has an incredible testimony how God very recently has healed him of cancer, delivered him. But in here last Wednesday night, right in this room, he requested prayer for a friend, stage four cancer. Listen to this. So a good friend of mine is just a few years older than I am. Uh, he's a fellow police officer. He uh, was diagnosed with stage four metastatic uh, colon cancer. It was it had spread to his spleen, his liver, and his abdomen wall. He was still able to work, and his goal was, is, as long as I'm healthy, I'm going to work, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to keep living life, and yeah. well, I'll pray my way through it, and we'll see, you know. And I don't want to say his name, because I, I don't know how much. Yeah. Um, but he is a firm believer, and he just prayed his way through it, and he did have a few setbacks um, so I'll try to keep it keep it brief um, last week he went for a, uh, a routine PET scan and the scan came back completely clear <laughs> amen amen <laughs> yeah there's no evidence of disease yeah anywhere in his body wow they can't yeah they don't have an explanation he, he had like a 17% chance of living five years. Yeah. And now it's completely gone. Praise God. So Praise just God. keep praying for him. Um, they've decided they're going to just leave the port in and he'll stay on his like bi-weekly or something chemo. They're going to yeah. keep a watch on him, but it's gone. Yeah. So I just wanted to thank you for praying for my buddy and just keep praying Amen. for him and pray for me too. So, good, good. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Who else want to give a praise report before we take prayer request? Prayer and praise go hand in hand. Jamie? All right, I got one. I'm a little bit of a, a nerd about this. I was telling Mr. Rutherford <laughs> earlier because um, we were catching up, you know. Yeah. But I was given a second job uh, that is 
it's really just like a job that I really love. And again, it's a small thing. It's not like cancer. Yeah. But you know, I just, God kind of just prompted me to like send a random email to uh, an art studio. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, uh, you guys, you need me. And they were like, Yes, we do. And they hired me. Wow. Like, with, like literally, it worked, you know? And uh, God just gave me that little sense of, to try it. Yep. And um, I got hired, and I've been working there for a couple of weeks, and it's and it just pays really well, and I really enjoy Good. it. Good. And, and I'm just really thankful. Amen. You know, I really want to thank God. Good. So. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I love how God can answer prayers big ways small ways and you know what may not seem big to you might be very big to me and vice versa so uh giving praise giving praise anybody else praise report then we'll take prayer requests just want to praise god anyone all right well let's do consider those that are on our prayer list i uh was in to see Rose Grog this afternoon. She's still in intensive care. Um, had worked on a couple valves of her heart and uh, not really feeling well. So I told Rose we'd have special prayer for tonight. And uh, George O'Banion, good to have you with us tonight. Mr. George, I don't think he minds us saying it. Uh, he's got a date Monday with the surgeon to have a pacemaker put in. And uh, we're really praying that this is going to uh, uh, give George just a new lease on life. So we pray much for him. Who else? Special request? Anybody? Brenda? I'm wearing an ultramonitor now. Okay. And I'll find out tomorrow. Well, I'll take it in tomorrow. Okay. And then I'll find out from there. All right. We'll be praying. We'll be praying. Anybody else? Per request? Yes. Yes. Diane? Sure. She's got six more chemos. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, Marie? Amen. Marie is going through some tests right now. Let's be praying that God will touch her and get a good report. Continue to pray much for little Caitlin Rutherford, Obeying Boggs. Both had uh, surgeries last week and both are home and uh, doing pretty well. So let's just pray that God would do a miracle uh, for that little girl, that little boy. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for this time that we could get into your word. And as I always say, I always pray, so thankful that when we get into your word, your word gets into us. And so, Father... I pray that uh, this journey we're starting in the book of Proverbs, I pray that we will look at it as uh, a time of learning, instruction, even discipline. But Lord, the, the result is going to be a life that is purposeful, that has meaning. And uh, most importantly, it's a life that uh, is rooted and grounded in you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we're starting something, and I pray that as we journey together from week to week, there are going to be a lot of twists and turns on this road, but I pray that we will be able to uh, just get some nuggets of gold each and every week and some things that are going to help us better uh, live life and understand things in life and then be able to pass that on to others especially the next generation and the next generation. So, Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for every home, every family that's represented here tonight. I pray a blessing on them. We thank you for the wonderful praise reports in the house. We uh, know as we call out these names and we look at this prayer sheet tonight that you know the intimate details, even unspoken requests that have not been mentioned. You know what's heavy on our hearts tonight. But we have great confidence with which to pray because you've never failed us and you never will. So, Lord, we're just praying that you would continue to answer prayer, intervene, work miracles, 
bring people to a saving knowledge of you. We're still rejoicing in 12 people that were baptized Sunday at Midland Valley Community. Uh, what a barometer of the health of a church when we see men, women, boys, and girls being baptized and publicly uh, demonstrating their faith in you. So, Father, as uh, we move deeper into this week and uh, further into this year, I pray that you're just going to revive and renew your people. And may we see a harvest of souls here this fall at Midland Valley Community. And for all you do, we'll be giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement say, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for coming tonight.